Hello and welcome to this video. This is a follow-up video on one of the previous ones about milk churn stands. And I don't think there's going to be a lot of mapping in it, maybe even nothing, but bear with me. So when I did a bit of a follow-up on the milk churn stands, trying to find more milk churn stands that might have already been mapped by other people, I couldn't find any in Ireland to nobody's surprise, but I found a couple in Germany. There was uh, a mapper in Germany and I don't know if they're German or not. I've tried to contact them. They haven't replied yet. And um, I found quite a few in an area of Germany that's called the Wendland. I'll explain that in a little bit. And there were two that used the new or the actual tags for milk churn stand because I had to change it a little bit. Um, it's now man-made. Nothing changed there. But milk underscore churn underscore stand because we're supposed to not use hyphens actually in the tags and I'd kind of forgotten about that or came to the wrong conclusions reading the wiki, but it's with underscores now. So I searched for that in Germany and I found two examples and I'll show you. This will show a few more, but I can't only just show you those two. So this is that area. So one was in, I think it's pronounced Pritzia, I'm not entirely sure. Like, I should know this as a German, how to pronounce a place name, but I'm not quite sure. Because it looks so French, I found that a bit confusing. So there is one, Pritzia, or whatever it's called. And the other one is in was in Ranzau. And what struck me when I looked at these two, as you might see that already, um, the shape of the village. So, I'll, so there's Ranzau. So you see there's a street or a road going in. And then all the houses, they're actually, they look like barns, but they're numbered, so they must be houses. They are all around a green, which this one doesn't seem to have a green, but I think Pritzia has one. Yeah, and there's more grass in this area, actually. So um, this settlement form is called a Rundlingsdorf in German. Or just a Rundling. It is used in English as well as Rundling or I don't know, whatever the English pronunciation of it is. And it is a medieval settlement farm. If I understand it correctly, I, I didn't know much about it before. I just looked it up on Wikipedia. But it is a settlement farm that was used a lot in the Wendland. So the Wendland is um, named after the Wenden which is a, an old name for Slavic people. So in the 12th century, I think, the German-speaking people, let's call them that, um, expanded east, just like the Normans ex expanded west into Ireland. The German-speaking people exp expanded east into Slavic um, territory. And the Wenden were the Slavs that they came into contact with, but they didn't call them Slavs yet, which is a derogatory term. By the way, it's from slave. And so they called them Menden. And some person in the, I think, 18th or 19th century believed that they had all lived in the Wendland, and that's why it's called Wendland. It's not actually an old name for this area. But the Wenden weren't just there. So it's basically, the Wendland is kind of between, if you draw a line between Hanover and Berlin, it's a little bit north of that. But the Wenden actually lived in Saxony and in Thuringia. And there's a strip that goes around down here somewhere. So that's the Wendland. Um, and the Rundling. So if I go back in here, I'll just start the search again to show you that there are quite a few. So these are all, I think, I'm not sure if this is still in Wendland. But there are quite a few that were already mapped. I added maybe, I don't think I actually added one there in that area. I added a couple more in Germany. But um, this same person um, who had added the one in Ranzau and in, what's it called again? Pritzia had added a tag historic equals milk churn stand. And I just added the man-made milk churn stand then. So um, they must be living in that area and they map them. The thing about these ones in the Wendland and in Germany in general is some of them aren't actually old milk churn stands. They're just put there as memorials for the 
dairy heritage of that area. So I came across a couple of newspaper articles saying this such and such a village has a milk churn stand again and they're not using them other than for decorative or for, you know, educational purposes. I want to show you one of the villages. I found one of them in on Mapillary. There's very little Mapillary in that area in Germany. I'm not, I don't know if there's just generally very little Mapillary in Germany, but um, I found one of the villages, Güstritz, which is um, one of them. I can't find it now. Anyway, I found it on Mapillary and I'll show you the village because it's really beautiful. So... Uh, here is the map. So the you can see it's the same principle with the Rundling. So there is no green area mapped apart from the playground. A lot of them do have a playground in the middle of the village now, which is lovely. And they also have a post box. I'll talk about that in a second. And usually, apparently, they didn't have a church. The first one, I think, uh, Pritzia has one, but that was built later on. Originally, these villages didn't have churches. Doesn't mean that they weren't Christians, they don't have to travel to church. So we'll go into this part. And sometimes, I don't know if you can see that here, um, the Rundling word is also part of the address now. So it's called Güstritzer. Rundling, because that, that part of the village is the Rundling, and then there were a couple more houses built. Anyway, so we're going in here, and you see they all have street names, even in the villages. And they're all timber-framed houses with uh, brick. There's a lot of brick in, in that area. I think the landscape is very similar to the Midlands, in that you find a lot of sand. It's very sandy. Um, soil and there are also a lot of erratics which we will see a couple of so they're the lovely um, timber framed houses and they're quite big and you have big in entrances um, into the barn and there, sometimes there seems to be a door next to it and you see also house numbers on the houses I've never been in that area, so I can't tell you an awful lot. Um, what you can also see on the left here, hopefully you can see that, is that there are inscriptions in the beams. You will see more examples of that. So we'll just go on, go on, go on. So you see all the erratics here. The tag is, I think, natural equals rock. So you see the the gables usually also face the the village green. That's a horrible example here on the right, but most of them are really beautiful. This one is a bit um, extra special. Um, it's just made of brick, no timber frames. I don't know, maybe it was some richer person's house. I don't know. And what I think might be behind this, there's a, another erratic which has the name of the village on it, Güstritz. But it's a bit blurred. Mapillary blurs uh, names sometimes. I'm not sure if what's behind there is maybe a milk churn stand. I've found someone's email address in the village and I've written to them. But, you know, that was about an hour ago. Can't expect them to reply that quickly. There are more inscriptions there. And I think they're all either Bible quotes or hymns, church hymns. This would be Protestant uh, country. There's uh, the playground there. And you see how the gables all face the green. And you have the roads are asphalted, but you see a little bit of the old surface here still. And there is a memorial for... Uh, Polish workers that were forced to work there uh, during the Second World War or after the Second World War. It doesn't say in the description, so I can't tell you. So there, there you can see one of those quotes. Wer nur auf Gottes Gnade sieht und sucht darin zu stehen. 
and so on. It sounds like from the rhythm, it sounds like it could be from a hymn. It's probably a Lutheran hymn. I didn't Google it. Uh, so that is the Hundling. And if we go back into the map here, you might have noticed uh, that there's a post box here, which um, there's also supposed to be one in Güstritz, which I couldn't find. But there's a post box there, a bus stop. If we go into Ranzau, there we have again, I only see it on this zoom level, there's a post box next to the milk churn stand. And I can't remember if I mentioned that in the milk churn stand video in the first one, but it's on the wiki page anyway that there is very often in England as well a post box next to the milk churn stand because it is in a very central location in the village. There again. And um, it was a communication hub for people. People met there, they heard the news there. There again is a post box and a bus stop and here okay though this one is a rundling but it doesn't have a milk turn stand according to the map but there is a post box and it also has a church we've been in this one so um there are a lot of bus stops and just to show you how many there are I'll just add that so it's highway equals bus underscore stop and I have to search in the same area zoom out a bit so this is what I call connectivity rural connections it's nothing like an Ireland I just wanted to make that point so these are bus stops um, and there, this is my segue because I talked to a friend in Germany who I went to university with and we studied German together, um, linguistics and literature. And I talked to her about milk turn stands because she's from a small town as well. But I thought her grandparents were from a dairy farming background and she had never heard the well, she had heard the word before, but she didn't really know what it was. And she's obviously my age um but she did say after we talked about a little bit um about milk train stand she says oh that's why i get it now and she says that if if you're in a regional train in germany again connectivity and they stop an awful lot on the on the you know in every village she said oh that's why people say it stops at every milk train stand so that apparently that's a saying in Germany. I'd never heard it before because then I would have probably known the word milk churn stand, uh, Milchrampe in German. There are about four words for it in German, depending on which region you are in. And then I talked to my mom about this and she talked to my stepfather and he also said, um, it's not actually milk churn stand. It's, oh, it stops at every milk churn. And I dismissed that first, but it is actually the same because you only see milk churns on the road if they're on the milk churn stand and it's not just used with trains but also with buses he says so that is apparently a saying in germany you wouldn't get that in ireland of course because there's very little rural transport yeah so that's that and then i wanted to show you i'll show you all the ones uh, roughly in germany so there are a couple more i found and one was in Malkwitz, which is also a Slavic, um, the, the it's end, um, ending in the place name um, hints at that it was a Slavic um, settlement first. So this one here, and I actually found it on Wiki Commons. That's how I found it in general. And this is what it looks like. And you can see that there's a little plaque on it and it says Milchrampe, which is one of the four words in German for milk churn stand. And about im Jahre 1937, which means built in the year 1937. So this is when the use there started. And I did actually, I think I did add the start date here as well, which is great to have. And this looks to be an actual old one made of whatever, bricks and something underneath. And the milk turns do look a lot smaller than the ones in Ireland. And a lot of the rebuilt ones 
in Germany that I have seen pictures of all wooden and they don't look as, you know, as, like they could bear a lot of weight. But you see the numbers and someone from Tullahoch got back to me and commented in the, on the last video and said that is the number of the farmer for the creamery. So they just put the, the number of the farm or the farmer on it and then the creamery knew which farm it had come from. So that's what the number is and they you can see they use them in Germany as well. And these whole, um, the Rundlings villages, they reminded me of a, a village or a settlement farm in Ireland, which is Klochan. I've mentioned that in a couple of videos. Um, Klochan is an old settlement farm, which is early medieval apparently. And it's it has some similarities to the Rundling in that they usually didn't have a church. And they're not a bad example because there is a church there. And um, they also, they're usually in the cul-de-sac, which these ones now aren't anymore because, you know, it's a long time since the 12th century. A lot of roads have been built since then. And... Usually in the Clochans, apparently, again, according to Wikipedia, um, the the land was very poor. So um, I'll actually, there's the article. And they have them in Scotland and in on the Isle of Man as well. I'll just read this out. A Clochan, Irish Clochan, is a small settlement or a hamlet on the island of Ireland, the Isle of Man and Scotland. Though many were originally Kirk towns, I haven't a clue what that means, Today, they are often thought of as small villages lacking a church, post office, or other formal building. It is likely that many date to medieval times or earlier, a cluster of small single-story cottages of farmers and or fishermen invariably found on poor land. They were often related to the Rondale system of farming, which is apparently, I clicked on it, as you can see, some like pre-communist um, way of farming or living. So what they do have in general, uh, or what they do have in common is that there was no church and that they have a kind of a village green, I think, and which is not mentioned there. And they were planned, I think, both of them. I'm not sure about the Clochans, but uh, I read it somewhere that they were kind of planned. So I think what they have in common is that they are like a cluster of buildings like you have villages in Ireland that are not clusters of buildings, they're just, you know, um, more cluttered than clustered. And that they, I think they're both planned and they don't have churches. And there are differences as well. Obviously, the um, the houses that I showed you in Güstritz are very much not single-story cottages. They're massive three-story buildings. So that's that's very different. Um, I can tell you two examples in Ireland, apart from the ones that are here listed here, which have Clochan in their name even. Uh, one is Bully Glass in County Kilkenny. This one here. I haven't been there, unfortunately, so I can't show you any pictures or anything. And the other one is Bally Brassel, which I have been to when we did the thatch survey. This is Bally Brassel. And it has lost a lot of its character um, because so this is a this is a dairying village I think mostly. Well, they would have done tillage and um, dairying further up the hill. That's why it's called a bully. But Belly Brassel is a fishing village mostly I think because it's very close to the shore river shore. Um, when we went there. The reason we went there is that there were two thatched cottages there in 1994. So we had to check whether they were still there. And they're both gone. So this was one of them. Hennebreeze, which was here. And this is the other one. I mean, they're only part of the whole house, but they were thatched. This one is completely demolished. This was here, I think. And then we met the farmer and he said that there was another one here. So you had a, a cluster of, this is a house, there was a house here, and there was a house 
and I think this one is a house as well. And there might have been more in the past, but a lot of them have been demolished. So this uh, Klochan, if it is a Klochan, this structure of the village is completely gone. And it is gone, full stop, because these um, two cottages here were demolished and big uh, barns were built on top of them or f some sort of farm buildings. So that's this heritage gone. Um, there is a little style here with uh, possibly maybe a mass path. I don't know where the next church is. But it doesn't have a church either. Neither does Bully Glass. What the Rundling also has in common with planned villages in Ireland much, much later in the 19th century or planned towns like I was just in Gieschel last weekend, so they have a village green. If I could find one with the green, please. Yeah, so there we have a green. And we have a milk churn stand, a post box there, and a bus stop, which is not very medieval. Um, also, church. And um, in planned villages, you get that a lot. You have a village green because people need a bit of greenery, and they also use it for their fairs and whatever. And then you often have all your amenities around it, not a church. Uh, the more, the bigger ones will have a church. Um, but you have a post office and you have a pub and you have maybe the estate office. So Gieschel has all of that and the school. Um, and then they were all closed down and the amenities all moved. The post office usually moves now into a petrol station. And the school um, either closes down completely or uh, moves to a, a larger area and all the centrality of the village is lost because everybody drives. You don't need that anymore. Um, I want to go and maybe see if we can find a green. There is Gustritz. I found it. I thought it had... No, of course it doesn't have a milk churn stand. Um, because I haven't found out if it has one. So we'll do a little bit of mapping. So uh, I'll have to go to it here. We'll add a bit of grass here. Oh yeah, um, before we do that, I, I don't know if you can see that, but so this is the main road going through the village, the Göstritzer Rundling. But you can see here that there is a footpath. I'll just draw that. Going across all the green bits. Oh, whoops. Because people, you know, when you want to visit your neighbor, you're not going to go into the middle of the village and then back out radiating um, onto their driveway. I'm just gonna take the shortest way possible. I'll end it here. Add a footpath and then we can't leave it there. So I'll add this driveway here to connect this service road. So they haven't drawn all the service roads here. Oh. And then we can add a bit of green here, a bit of grass, which is not as green as it is here. So the tag is land use grass. There's another footpath here. One characteristic that I read about is that they didn't have a, a village pond. So I'm a bit confused by this here now. Also, I can't remember seeing it. Uh, but that's one of their characteristics that I didn't have a village pond because they were... It was built on slightly higher ground and there was usually a river nearby. So they didn't need a, um, a village pond. I'll save that. Add it uh, footway and to 
grass source is, I think it's Bing, it is. I'm sure it'll show in a little bit. I'll show you all the um, mapped because this is still only Germany mostly. I'll just zoom out to show you all of Europe. I tried to find any in Canada or the US that don't seem to have them. Even though they must have had dairy, um, dairying. There are still only five in Ireland so far because none of my audience have added any. Quite a few in Wales. And this cluster here, as I said, in the Wendland. And a couple in Finland, uh, one in Estonia, uh, one in Sweden, I think. There were a couple on Wikicommons in Norway, but there were no coordinates and I'm, I can't, you know, look for them on satellite view. And I'll, it, sometimes it works. If it's good satellite view, you can see them, but not with the satellite imagery in Norway, unfortunately. This one I found by looking for the word Multibank, which is another one of those words in German. Um, looking through the descriptions and it has, it says, um, milk churn stand as it was used in the 1950s when Eisensburg, which is that village there, still had 65 dairy farmers and it's classified as a memorial and a lot of them are. And this might not be an original one because it's mapped as memorial sculpture, but maybe that is just because they there was no tag before I introduced it. I don't know. So that was our little trip uh, to Germany. I hope you found that interesting. And there was an Irish connection, somewhat. And hopefully I shall see you soon again in another one. Slangerfall.